Well, good morning. Welcome here to the Canton United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Clay. It is a delight to be together as the family of God, to rejoice in the truth of our faith, that Christ is with us as we gather in his name this morning. I just want to extend a special welcome to those that have joined us um, here in person and those that are watching on our live stream or maybe on YouTube later during the week. But it is just good to be together uh, to celebrate uh, today, especially on the day of Pentecost, to celebrate the work of the Spirit in our midst today. And so we're going to begin worship by singing this morning. We're going to turn to page 393 in our hymnal and sing through Spirit of the Living God. God. Uh, the words will also be on the screen for you this morning as well. So let's go ahead and sing Spirit of the Living God, Fall Afresh on Me.
Thank you, Sharon. As you're comfortable this morning, I invite you to stand for a responsive call to worship. The responses for you this morning will be on the larger yellow text on the screen this morning. O oh Lord, your spirit hovered over the waters as you made the earth. Your spirit breathed life into human beings. The spirit inspired prophets to speak out against injustice. It sang praises in the midst of the souls. When Jesus was baptized, we knew him through the descent of the spirit. When the Your spirit guided the journeys of Peter and Paul. Dear friends, let us praise the work of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit enlightens our hearts and empowers our spirits today. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is found in your smaller black hymnal, the Faith We Sing Supplement. We're going to turn to page 2237 and sing together as a fire is meant for burning. The words will also be on the screen for you as well.
powerful and moving spirit. We give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for drawing us together here in this space. Drawing us together as you drew the disciples together so long ago in an upper room in order to inspire them. And so may we be in this space, both physically and, and, and virtually. May we be here and may we be expectant and may we, may we be ready when you do inspire us, when you do stir in our hearts, when you do embolden us to do the work that you have for us to do. <coughs> Holy God, on this Pentecost Sunday, we just give you thanks for the creative work of the Spirit. We give you thanks for the way that the Spirit was moving and active at the moments of creation. The way that it inspired hearts throughout the entire testimony of Scripture and the way that it came afresh and anew on this day of Pentecost. And what more can we hope for than a fresh wind of the Spirit to move and work in the lives of those around us today? We come to you as we are. Some of us come already inspired. Some of us are getting there. Others of us are terrified of what you might be doing in the midst of us. We come as we are, seeking you, seeking to be empowered, seeking to be comforted, seeking greater knowledge. We give you thanks for the way that we have received that in our lives and the ways that we look forward to receiving it. And Spirit, as we gather, we know that there is work for you to do in the midst of, our, of, our, of those that we love this day. We know those waiting test results and possible, you know, heading into surgery or, or not. We know of those who mourn. We know of those who are in need of continued healing. And we know that our earth needs rain. And so, Holy Spirit, move. Move in lives as you have moved before. Move in situations as you have moved before. Move in our hearts and inspire us to be as Jesus intended for us to be one. And Spirit, move in us as we join our voices and become one in prayer, using words that Jesus used to teach us how to pray in the first place. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for Amen. We're going to continue in worship by singing together. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. We're going to sing to it two times.
this time I want to invite our younger disciples forward for a time that's mostly just for them. Howdy, Micah. How are you this morning? Good? We doing all right? Good deal. Well, I want to know today, when is a time that you have had to be brave? What does it mean to be brave? What, what does being brave look like? You have to be tough, you have to be tough right? Okay, when you get a really big owie, you have to be tough, and that's being brave, isn't it? Yeah, that's being really brave. What's that? When you're facing your fear, yeah, that takes being brave.
All right, you head back over to the treat basket and then head back to your moms and dads or your adults. And uh, thanks for coming up this morning. Our scripture this morning comes to us from the book of Acts in chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, and this is the story of the day of Pentecost. Let's so go ahead and hear together the words of scripture. Uh, this comes to us on page 159 of the New Testament of your pew Bibles, if you'd like to follow along with this reading from the Good News Translation. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing and it filled the whole house where the disciples were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire, which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious men and women who had come from every country in the world. When they heard this noise, a large crowd gathered. They were all excited because each one of them heard the believers talking in his own language. In amazement and wonder, they exclaimed, These people who are talking like this are Galileans. How is it then that all of us hear them speaking in our own native languages? We are from Parthia, Media, and Elam, from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, from Pontus and Asia, from Phrygia and Pamphylia, from Egypt and the region of Libya near Cyrene. Some of us are Roman. Both Jews and Gentiles converted to, Jerus to Judaism, and some of us are yet from Crete and Arabia. Yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things that God has done. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? But others made fun of the believers, saying, oh, these people are just drunk. Then Peter stood up with the other eleven apostles and in a loud voice began to speak to the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to me and let me tell you what this means. We are not drunk as you suppose, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Instead, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. This is what I will do in the last days, God says. I will pour out my spirit upon everyone. Your sons and daughters will proclaim my message. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Yes, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will proclaim my message. I will perform miracles in the sky above and wonders on the earth below. There will be blood and fire and thick smoke, and the sun will be darkened, and the moon will turn red as blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And then whoever calls to the Lord for help will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be holy and acceptable to you. For you, O God, are our rock, and you are our Redeemer. And we give you thanks for who you are as we say together, Amen. So long before I was a parent and had children of my own, I knew how much work went into pulling off a children's birthday party. And I knew that because of my best friend in seminary, Chad, and his son, Edward. Edward was turning nine years old at the time, and he's much older now because we're all much older now. But I got a text from Chad, and he said, can you come help me? And given that that was the nature of our friendship, Lindsay and I dropped everything and made our way over to Chad and Kim's. And it wasn't very long before we realized that we were going to be helping to set up for this birthday party. So Chad, Edward, and I went to the church that they were attending at the time to grab tables and chairs and as nine-year-olds do, Edward got tired of helping to load. And then, since Chad and I are, you know, nothing but, you know, followers, we also got tired of having to load tables and chairs. It was at that moment that Edward did something that I will never forget. He started to sing a little song from the TV show Wonder Pets. He would say, what's gonna work? Teamwork. What's gonna work? Teamwork. I heard some of you singing along. That became the motto for our day. 
We would sing and we would load tables. We would sing and we would load chairs. We would sing as we would unload the tables and chairs on Chad and Kim's front lawn. And that wasn't the end of all the help that they needed on that day. In getting ready for this birthday party, we did some light yard work. We did some decorating. We did some grilling. All the while singing, what's gonna work? Teamwork. And just putting it in perspective, all that work happened before the party even started. What was looming over us this entire time was undoing everything that we had just done. We'd gone to pick up the tables and chairs, and that meant that we had to go drop off the tables and chairs and reset everything. What's gonna work? Teamwork. And that is just the nature of kids' parties, isn't it? But bigger than that, that's the nature of life. Life can be a lot of work for everybody, right? And sometimes we find ourselves needing a source of help. Sometimes we find ourselves needing a source of energy. Sometimes we find ourselves needing a team of, or needing a power source to accomplish all that is before us. For Chad and Kim and Lindsay and Edward and I that day, our source of power was teamwork and the Wonder Pets. And for Chad and I, it was a desire to give a nine-year-old the birthday of his dreams. But there are more sources of power out there, are out there, aren't there? On the day of Pentecost, Jewish believers were gathered from the various places all mentioned in verses 9 and 10 and even beyond, and they were all in Jerusalem. And each and every single one of them had found a source of strength, found a source of help, found a source of power to accomplish all that they had in front of them. But it wasn't teamwork. It was God's work. It was God's work. See, in Jerusalem on that day, they were together to celebrate the festival of weeks. And this was at its heart, and when it was first instituted, it was a festival at the start of the planting season or in the middle of the planting season as a way of giving thanks for the way that God was going to move and work in that year's harvest. It was a time for the people of God to bring their offering of first fruits to the temple. But as time went on, the meaning of that day grew, and it became a time for the people of God to give thanks for the law. To give thanks for the law that was given to Moses on Mount Sinai. It was the law that formed them as a formal nation. It was the law that had become their sense of their, their source of help and their sense of energy and the source of their power to accomplish all that was before them. So they might sing something like, What's gonna work? Law work. Makes a terrible children's song. But it was where they drew their power. The disciples, on the other hand, were not in the mood to be celebrating because the disciples felt powerless and exhausted. In the scripture this morning, when we find the disciples, we find them in an upper room. And they are either still there from the, from the days following the resurrection, or this is an upper room to which they returned because the sight of a large crowd of Hebrew believers all gathered in Jerusalem was too eerily similar and unsafe for them. Because the last time that happened was the time when the crowd was crying for the crucifixion of their friend and leader, Jesus. And so plunging back into that crowd was not on their list of things to do. So the disciples found themselves separated. And they found themselves looking for a source of power. 
what's going to work? Not for them. They don't know what's going to work. They don't know what that answer is. But because of the influence of Jesus on their lives, they know that it is not the law to which the Hebrew believers cling. Because after all, it was Jesus who reinterpreted the law in order to proclaim the true nature of the kingdom. It was Jesus who fulfilled the demands of the law by giving his life on the cross and defeating death in the resurrection. But then, as the disciples were feeling so scared, as the disciples were feeling so helpless, it is the Holy Spirit that showed up and filled the room and ended their wandering and ended their wondering and ended their longing. Because for them, they got their answer of how it was that they were going to accomplish all that was before them. What's gonna work? Spirit work. It's not a great children's song, but it is what happened. What's gonna work? Spirit work. On that day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit infiltrated the disciples' sequestered quarters and filled them with hope. On that day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit became for them a renewed source of help, a renewed source of energy, a renewed source of power to accomplish all that was before them. The truth is, is that the Holy Spirit filled them. And it filled them with a renewed sense of life. And for the very last time in the testimony of Scripture, it is the Holy Spirit that enabled them to leave the upper room. A space to which they would not return. They left the whole, the, that upper room, and it, the Holy Spirit is what allowed them and empowered them to communicate with a diverse group of people that would have been hard, even not under the circumstances. By the power of the Holy Spirit, those disciples, in principle among them, Simon Peter, the rock upon whom the church is built, by the power of the Holy Spirit, they overcame the challenges that they were facing. They overcame the helplessness that they were feeling. By the power of the Holy Spirit, they proclaimed the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and in so doing, fulfilled the prophetic words of the prophet Joel. <coughs> Sorry. By the power of the Holy Spirit, they would go on to create a more energetic and vibrant community of faith that came to be known as the Church Universal a community whose work we continue not only in this physical space, but in the world around us. As we are so compelled and we, as we are so expelled forth as the disciples were on that first day of Pentecost. What's gonna work? Spirit work. Friends in Christ, when we lean on that help, when we lean on that energy, when we lean on that power source given to us long ago, it is the Holy Spirit that enlivens us as it did on that day of Pentecost. It is the Holy Spirit that empowers us. Theologian Friedrich Buechner puts it this way, the Holy Spirit is the power of life within you. And when the Spirit is unusually strong, you are unusually alive, and you breathe that Spirit into others' lives, and you become inspiring. This is what God did on the day of Pentecost, and this is what God continues to do in and through us. God breathed onto that community of disciples and God continues to breathe over us. 
God's breath filled the disciples and gave them the ability to go out and speak about God's deeds of power. God's breath fills us and inspires us to connect with people in the world around us in life-giving ways. So what's going to work? Spirit work. What's going to work? Spirit work. Can we do one more? What's going to work? Spirit work. In your lives and in mine. Would you pray with me? Inspiring and empowering Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for this day. A day when we so focus on the work that you did on that first day of Pentecost. But it's bigger than that. Spirit, we give you thanks for the work that you continue to do in our lives. For the discernment that you provide to us that we may know the will of God for the empowering that you give to us, that we may do the work that God has called us to do, for your ongoing presence with us that is our comfort in the midst of loneliness, that is our strength in the midst of powerlessness. We give you thanks for who you are. And through who you are, we give you thanks for who you've made us to be. Empower us to live by the Spirit, not just on this day, but every day. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is found on page 558 of your United Methodist hymnal. Let us stand as we are comfortable and sing together, We Are the Church.
Friends, now we prepare to leave this space of worship. Yet we know some things that are solid and sure as the ground beneath our feet and the sky above our heads. Friends, it is the Holy Spirit that founds us and grounds us. The Holy Spirit is found in the space between all things, and is with us wherever we go. And so, until we meet again, we will go in peace and power by the same Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go ahead and bring worship to a close by singing together Sweet, Sweet Spirit on page 334 of the hymnal and also on the screen for you this morning.